what's up youtube make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure you hit that like button and hit that notification bell and make sure that you uh share my videos now look peoples i was sitting here thinking about what kind of defense was shitty cuz and his attorney gonna go into this trial with you know now his defense his defense can't be i killed ermius because he called me a snitch you know the 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 politics of the streets you know that 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 ain't gonna fly that ain't gonna hold any type of weight in the courtroom even though many people will kill you for calling them a rat or a snitch because it's highly degrading and disrespectful and that's what goes on in the streets you know nonetheless it's still first degree murder you know in this case which uh which brings me to is Eric Holder, a.k.a. Shitty Cuz, in fact, a real snitch? Now, let's examine this uh, closely, peoples. First, no one has come forward with any proof or paperwork. Without this snitch narrative, there's really no case, and then we have to come up with a legitimate reason as to why Shitty Cuz did what he did. Because he definitely, he definitely killed Ermius, and it's most certainly a reason behind it. And after doing so much research and putting things together and eliminating possible suspects, I truly believe that he was being extorted for money. And I believe he was being extorted for a while. And he became, you know, he just became tired of it. Now, that would lead us to observe and look at people whom would benefit from extortion and wanted Ermius out the way. Now, the snitch narrative keeps the heat and focus on one person while the other culprits are in the clear in this grand cover up and scheme. Now, I hope you all following me. So just pay attention, you know, because I'm, I'm about to make some valid points. OK, like I said, the snitch narrative keeps the heat and focus only on one person. While the other culprits are in the clear in this grand cover up and scheme. That's why that's that's why it's being pushed so hard in the media and with some of the alleged participants. The media didn't push this narrative until Big U started pushing it in that fraudulent video he created early on and everyone else followed in suit. This is facts, people. In his own words, he stated that it was an ex homeboy who was a known snitch from the hood that did it. That was his words, you know. My question is, if he's a known snitch, then where's the person or people he supposedly told on? And why come this paperwork isn't floating around? You know, somebody by now, somebody would have been put him on blast and showed the paperwork to everybody by now. It would have been on the Internet and everything, you know. And I don't want to hear that it's 60s business when everything else has been put out in the open and on the Internet. So I know if it's true, it's some paperwork somewhere and it's some people or a person or whoever the person is that's told on. And if they from 60s, why come they ain't came forward? Where that paperwork at? Where the proof at? Now, look, look at what Big Thundercat said in the grand jury hearings. He stated that he heard Ernius and Eric Holder talking about snitching and that there was court documents and paperwork on him and that he should be careful. Now, the person that's saying that it was uh, court documents and paperwork on him and that he should be careful, that's Nip. OK, that's what that's what Big Thundercat said he heard when he heard the conversation. Now, if you're from the hood or if you've been in the streets long enough, you know, if people don't like you and you're supposed to be a known rat, that nobody is going to talk to you in a caring manner, such as Cowboy stated Ermius talked to shitty cuz. If you a snitch, motherfuckers not going to tell you to be careful and look out for the well-being. You know, they not going to look out for your well-being unless they a snitch too, you know? Motherfuckers going to be, it's going to be big animosity towards that person. People going to have smirks and they going to have frowns upon their faces when they see that person. They going to want to do shit to that person. You know, motherfuckers going to be like, hey, that's such and such right there. Or they'll go, they'll go whoop you whoop right there. Go call the homies or let's get at him. You know, 
Ain't nobody fixing to be like, uh, you know, be careful, take care, you know. You know, see, peoples, this, either, this, this even furthers my notion that they pushing this snitch narrative because according to Cowboy's testimony, which they intend on using, it makes it seem like Ermius really cared for shitty cuz. It made it seem like he cared for his well-being and shitty cuz just killed him for no reason. You know, except for the snitch convo. Now, if they put this snitch narrative in place, that replaces the real reason why Ermius was killed. Now, peep this. I believe his sole purpose was to go and kill Ermius because they knew shitty was a killer already. He was a killer in the streets already and could be easily manipulated and coerced with a little bit of money. Yeah, I believe he was paid to kill him. And the snitch story is false. And to allegedly cover the asses of Big U, Kerry, Big Thundercat, and a few LAPD personnel. See, with the snitch narrative in place, you can't want nobody look at the extortion. They won't look at the real reason why it went down. So they keep pushing that snitch narrative. That's why the paperwork, you know, we need to locate that paperwork if it's any floating around. Because we could put a we could put a rest to this. We'll know, you know. This this will blow a hole in this case, as there's already many loopholes to begin with. So we need to we need to get on that and locate that paperwork, you know. And I don't believe that Karen Civil DJ uh, Khaled, T.I., and David Gross are involved, even though I made a video about David Gross. I don't believe none of them are involved, nor do I believe any of the 500 other people that everybody keep involving every day is involved, you know? He was hit by his ex-homeboy with the help of so-called homeboys over jealousy and money, and that's it. And I want to add that the LAPD commissioner allegedly lied, too. They never had plans on meeting with Ermius like they claim. If so, why would the chief of, po uh, chief of police allow his officers to surveillance and harass uh, Ermius and his brother and friends at the store all the time? They was being harassed. You know, people got pics of it. It was on the news. They was being watched. They was always being harassed. So why would the chief of police allow this to go on if he was supposed to meet with him. They knew what was going on. On April 1st, the LAPD commissioner gave a press conference stating that Ermius had emailed him February 26th about wanting to meet and discuss uh, about the gang violence, what they can do about the gang violence. Though he stated that he didn't read the email until after Ermius was killed. Now first, what made you read the email after he was killed? It took you 34 days to read that email, which lets us know if you read it late, then the meeting was never going to take place on April the 1st. How? When you had read the email on the 1st. See, that, that blows his whole story. It, it blows it out the water, you know. Secondly, he had no intentions on reading it, nor did they intend on meeting up with Ernest. And why would Rock Nation be concerned about the gang violence in L.A. like the commissioner also stated? And another thing, he said that the meeting would take place like Ermius wanted and it would be with Rock Nation and the Askadon family. I wonder since then if it has been done because I can't see them having a meeting uh, regarding gangs in secrecy where other gang members can't attend nor speak on the situation and it hasn't been any news coverage. So I don't believe it's took place at all like the commissioner stated it would. And last but not least, I wanted to leave this on everybody's minds. Ermius has taken numerous selfies with fans on March 31st, right? Mingling with people, being social. We can assume he probably was happy and being himself that day. You know, taking pictures with kids, grown-ups, all the fans, you know. And, and... My thing is this, what would make him stop in the middle of all of that 
and create that famous post that's on Twitter. Having strong enemies is a blessing. See, my point here is someone or something made him stop taking selfies and caught his attention where he felt it was very important to post that. Maybe it was a call because he posted at 2.52 p.m. 30 minutes prior to being killed or he peeped some shady shit while taking selfies. Somebody drove up, you know, I don't know, you know. Anyways, that's something to think about because something caught his attention and made him stop taking selfies to where he posted that. Because don't nobody just be doing what they doing and then just automatically stop and post that. Something made him do that. And like I said, that's something to think about, people. Anyway, that was stuff that was on my mind. I just wanted to get it out there so y'all could know about it. Let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section, you know. And once again, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you new, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that like button too. And make sure you hit that notification bell because that's the only way you're going to get my videos when they drop. You'll be able to get them first. And make sure you share my videos with everybody so they can see these. Peace out.